Hey, thanks, Sam. Thanks to all of you for tuning in today. We're going to be discussing some Dodd-Frank mandated changes to RESPA's Reg X and the Truth in Lending Reg Z that relate to high-cost mortgages and home ownership counseling. If you'll turn over to <clears throat> page one with us in your materials, the home ownership counseling changes will affect virtually every loan made uh, that is covered by RESPA, other than reverse mortgages and, and timeshare secured loans. The high-cost mortgage loans may be something that you've already been making, but uh, if so, there are some major changes to those, and you may find yourself making more. For those of you who have not in the past made high-cost mortgage loans, you're tuning in to find out how the coverage rules have been expanded and tweaked so that you understand which loans you'll be making in the future will be covered. There are three basic components to the webinar today. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first is the coverage and trigger changes under HOEPA for high-cost mortgage loans. The second is uh, the uh, discussion of the two types of loans on which pre-loan home ownership counseling will be mandatory. And then the third is the Reg X home ownership counseling requirements, which involve the providing of a list of home ownership counseling organizations to applicants for RESPA covered loans. So we're going to go through this so you'll understand how to identify the loans that are covered by each of these requirements and what you have to do if you determine that something is covered. These are new rules by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, and we're going to start with the Reg X rules that implement RESPA and the changes to those. So if you flip over to page two, you know that RESPA has been around since 1974. HUD is the agency that originally had uh, jurisdiction over it. That passed to the CFPB a couple of years ago. So we've got the CFPB uh, doing the Reg X revisions. And most of Reg X deals with settlement service costs, but it also gets into things like the prohibition against, in with respect to federally related mortgage loans, kickbacks, referral fees, excessive escrow balances, and um, most of the things that you have in RESPA are disclosures relating to settlement costs or escrows. This kind of is a departure from that. We're going to cover real quickly the scope of coverage of RESPA and the exemptions so that you understand exactly what we're talking about in terms of which loans this new home ownership counseling list requirement pertains to. So Jack, start us off with a, a run through of the scope of coverage. All right. If, um, if you haven't turned to page three yet, if you do that, um, we're looking at the standard coverage rules for RESPA. They haven't changed yet. Uh, RESPA currently applies, and as far as we know, will continue to apply to federally related mortgage loans. We have a definition that begins on page three, continues on page four, and the top of page five, elaborating on this, this concept of a federally related mortgage loan. I like to start part of the way down the page. On page three, <clears throat> if you look at uh, paragraph one, uh, subparagraph Roman numeral, small Roman numeral two, down towards the bottom of page three, uh, this is explaining what they mean by federally related. Every mortgage lender out there is federally related under one aspect of this or another. <clears throat> Most of you listening today, I'm sure, are, are banks or other financial institutions. The fact that you have deposits that are insured by the federal government, that alone makes all of your lending activities federally related. 
But let's say your bank or your holding company owns a, a mortgage company. It doesn't have deposits, doesn't have insured deposits. Its activities are still federally related, um, possibly because the loans are made in whole or in part, or they're guaranteed or insured, supplemented, assisted in any way by HUD. That connection makes you federally related. And that continues on page four. If your loan is intended to be sold to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Jenny Mae, uh, any of those organizations, that connection makes your loan federally related. If your bank doesn't otherwise meet the definition, or if your mortgage company doesn't otherwise meet the definition, we don't do any government-insured guaranteed loans. We don't sell to Fannie, Freddie, or Ginnie Mae. Uh, just the fact that you originate more than a million dollars per year of RESPA-type loans, that alone makes you federally related. So there's there's more detail there, but again, you're you're all federally related. Now turn back to page three. The first part of the definition, uh, to be a federally related mortgage loan, you got to have a first or subordinate lien, so lien status really doesn't matter. It has to involve residential real property. Now, the real property part of that means you got to have land or dirt as collateral. The residential part, if you look at small Roman numeral one here on page three, it says that uh, you got to have either a one to four family dwelling or a manufactured home. So basically, to have a federally related mortgage loan, you need a one to four family dwelling or mobile home, and in addition, you must have land as collateral. So if you have a federal related mortgage loan, this list that we're going to elaborate on in a few minutes will apply. Now we have uh, a list of exceptions that appear over on page five, and that continues on to page six. Um, and again, these haven't changed either. So if you're, the property securing your loan consists of 25 or more acres, no RESPA. If your loan's primarily for a business purpose, no RESPA. Now, defining a business purpose, years ago, there were some small differences between what was a business purpose for purposes of RESPA compared to truth and lending. Uh, years ago, they put the reference in RESPA that says, just look to the rules of Reg Z to determine if it's a business purpose or not. So if it's a business purpose for Reg Z, it's also business here. So if your loan is primarily for business, commercial, or agricultural purposes, no RESPA. Temporary financing, um, boy, I'd love to see them clean this one up, but it starts off great. Yeah, temporary financing, such as a construction loan, is exempt. All right, but then they start tearing that down. As soon as the exemption does not apply, if your construction loan may be converted is uh, is used as or may be converted to permanent financing. Now, <clears throat> the way I look at these is okay. How do we make sure our loan is exempt? Well, if you got a construction loan, you want it to be exempt. You make sure that you got a takeout commitment from another lender, because if you're doing construction and permanent, your loan is covered. If you go, but we're only doing the construction, well, do you have a takeout commitment from another lender? If you don't, it can be argued that your temporary loan may become permanent financing, and if that's the case, both construction and permanent would be covered. Also excluded here <clears throat> is um, when you're using the construction loan to transfer title to the first user, to finance transfer of title to the first user. Again, if you want your construction loan to be exempt, you're just lending them the money to build the house. They already own the land. If you're making a loan to build the house and the loan, the money to buy the lot, then you are financing transfer of title to the first user, and that'll make you covered. Also, you got to have a term of less than two years. So if you've got a construction loan and you want it to be exempt, you got to meet all those conditions. You're just doing the construction financing. They got to take out commitment for another lender for permanent. You're just lending them the money to build the house. They already own the land, and your loan has to have a term less than two years. Meet all of those conditions, then your temporary finance is exempt. Now, in my experience, most temporary loans are covered either because you're lending them money to buy the land or because you're doing construction and permanent financing. All right, our next exemption, top of page six, is vacant land. And if you think back to my comments a few minutes ago, if you only have a loan secured by vacant land, it has to be exempt. 
because for us to apply, you need a wonderful grammar.